35? Yeah, roughly around 35. 35. So there's 35. We're going to go ahead and get started because we have a lot to go over. And I want to the fact. Um, So this is kind of the agenda. We got a lot, as I said, to go over. Uh, this is our first meeting of the year. Uh, normally we like to have one in August, but uh, getting this library has been very difficult. Every day that we wanted to get it, it was used by somebody else and then travel schedule didn't allow us to use it a different time. So I'm glad we can finally get together. Uh, we'll do some introductions here. Uh, I'm Stephen Monk, so I'm the president of the Boosters. Uh, this is Margo, who you guys have kind of been chatting with. She's our VP of fundraising. Uh, not here is Mark Peterson. He's our VP and our uh, legal counsel uh, for us. Uh, Ling uh, Raleigh, who is our uh, temporary CFO, and then Jessica, one of our directors. So we do need more people. Um, so I'm glad you guys are here and new faces, which is always good to see. Um, we do have quite a few of us going to be retiring at the end of some at the end of this year and some at the end of next year. So we are looking to have new people start shadowing with us and coming on board to learn how we do stuff and start working with us on that. Uh, you know, we're going to see if we can't keep Margo a little longer, but she's done at the end of the year here. Uh, same with Amanda Allen, who helps us with web uh, web stuff. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, and then Jessica and I will be moving in a couple of years, so we need to transition out as well um, and kind of get those. And then we have a few positions that we just have not been able to fill in the four or five years that we've been doing this. Um, if you are interested in any of these or are talking about what's involved, see one of us, ask. Uh, on our website, there is a place that will give you a little more description of what each of the positions do, and you can even fill out a nomination form so that we can um, talk to you about that interest. Um, it's very simple. If you're interested, most likely you'll get it. <laughs> so there's not a lot of criteria. As long as you have time and are willing to put it in, uh, you know, we'll talk about what's involved and kind of get you going. Yes, yes. In fact, I'm we're we're right co-presidents of welcome. We're co-presidents of track. Uh, Margo's doing stuff for others. Uh, other people do, you know, stuff. So yes, you okay. most you certainly can. Yeah. No, you do not have to abandon your sport. Um, I do recommend um, if you're like a treasurer of a sport or something, you might. You know, depending on how much load that's going to take, you know, you'll want to consider what role you take in that club, but um, certainly no limitations on it. Okay. Uh, any questions about this before we move on? Anybody interested? Lots of hands. No, no hands yet. I'll go read online though. <laughs> yeah, people. do it. Yeah. Uh, and it is. Principal and Erica asked. Yeah. Us. Yeah, and we got to talk. Yeah, we're we're hoping to have a few that might take over some of the stuff. Uh, we have scheduled out. Right. What was that? It's especially some of the younger ones coming up. Too. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, and Ling and Mark on our team are going to be around for a long time. So we're trying to figure out what roles they can do. Mark is an attorney and he's very busy, so we're not quite sure what role he'll be able to continue doing moving forward. Um, and then Ling does all kinds of stuff, but they both have kids that are going to be here for a while. So they're going to be around for five, five, six plus years at least. Yeah. They're open now for the coming year, for the next year, or? So some of them like. It looked like I saw every position. For the most part, every position uh, is needed. And what we want to do is for those who are interested, like president, for example, is to let us know now so that we can start shadowing. It's going to take a good year's worth of uh, togetherness to be able to hand that off. 
So yes, in essence, we want to make sure that the people who are going to be in those new roles, especially for those of us uh, retiring out, will be able to fully manage it on their own by the end of next school year. Okay. So we have scheduled all of the rest of the meetings for the year. As soon as I got the opportunity, we booked them all so that we don't have to worry about any conflicts. All of these are on our website. So if you aren't familiar with our website, we're going to talk about it in a bit. But all of that's there. You can even subscribe to the calendar, and that way you get any updates we do. Um, they, this is the only Tuesday. And again, because every Thursday was booked. Um, I think wrestling had it last week. So. Um, so all of these other dates are Thursdays. That's normally when we do it. We try to keep it on Thursday. That way you keep your weekend, and we're not interrupting the, the beginning of your week. We're trying to keep it from seven to nine. Normally, most meetings were done by eight, probably, because uh, we have some new stuff to go over and then just Q&A. So there's not a lot of having to talk tonight. I'm hoping we'll be done by nine because we have a lot to go over, and I'm sure we have a lot of questions. So goals for the year. So we've got quite a few things that we're working on. Some of these, if you've been around with us for a bit, you'll see that they're still continuing from previous years. Uh, COVID obviously set us back quite a bit trying to get stuff done. Uh, we were only able to have four meetings last year altogether. Um, so it kind of hindered what we can do. Uh, we're working on trying to finalize some stipend, electronic stipend process. So those of you who use our check request system already, trying to make it as simple as that for doing the stipends. Um, Self-service club update. So this is one people have been asking for when you guys transition out a president or a treasurer, it's kind of a pain right now. You have to email us. We have to go in and manually do it. And if you already have check requests in process, you know, it kind of makes for a pain to kind of transition that. We will have launched by next week, uh, end of next week, uh, our new system that you'll be able to go in and do it all automatically. Um, and it'll automatically update all the open requests. Um, so I'll show you some of that in a, a little bit. Uh, one of the issues we've been struggling with is right now, there's you know five of us trying to manage 35 different clubs and we lose emails, forget who we've responded to, not responded to. So I, I understand the pain and frustration that we're having with that. So we are fixing that. We're implementing a new ticket system so most of you, if you have a job working at a corporate place, you know that you can submit tickets to your help desk and they'll get back to you and track it. And you'll get a request ID. That's coming. So we're working on implementing that now. And that way, every email you send in to us will be tracked. We'll know who has it, what status is it, who's working on it. Um, and we don't let anything fall through the cracks. Uh, new snack bar. So we've got that in process already. I uh, just got an update. I don't know that we're going to be up and running for track. We were kind of hoping that we would be, but we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, getting involved with the uh, parents uh, are the uh, um, kind of the school side of things. Right now, we do a lot with athletics, obviously, but we're trying to get more involved with the student body and you know other programs. Sober grad nights, kind of our crossover right they work very heavily with the student body and they're a booster so we're trying to use that model to really get more involved with everybody so i understand that is there someone on the booster that is facilitating the grad night is that what you're saying yeah margo and her team handle all sober grad night so that's its own club that's one of our 35. what is it sober grad night as well so it's its own booster also oh, okay yeah. all right i'm sorry okay gotcha it's the uh, only activity that isn't doesn't isn't an actual sport and it involves the entire class. Yeah. With volunteers from the rest of the student body. So okay. it's kind of the only one that's the entire school, mm -hmm. which is why we kind of flagged it as kind of a great model to yeah. ask things. Yeah, because we're, you know, the boosters doesn't just handle sports. I know that's kind of what we're known for. We mainly have the athletic teams, but we do have drama, we have choir. You know, uh, we had speech and debate. Technically, there is still a club, but I haven't heard from them since I've started. So, you know, but we we want to take on 
robotics, yeah, and film and media. So we have other, you know, classes that have now boosters because as a class, it's very limited on what they can do to fundraise and stuff, right, and how they can use their funds. So having a booster gives them the opportunity to do more with that. Um, and so we want to continue doing more of that and getting the involvement of the students to help with the website and marketing and things like that so they can actively use it as course material. Uh, we've had some issues with uh, refunds, um, some chargebacks and things like that this year that we normally haven't had. So we're going to be coming up with a global refund policy that we'll use for all teams, um, which will kind of dictate you know, what a parent can and can't do as far as asking for money, how we'll handle it, what the process is, what they need to give us, how they're going to do it. Um, as you can imagine, that's going to involve our legal team. It's going to involve the school. So it's going to take a while, but we do want to put something in um, so that it's not as open-ended as it is right now. Uh, you'd like to think we wouldn't have an issue with those kind of things, but unfortunately we do. Uh, scoreboards, uh, we're going to talk about that in a bit, but we're all going to be fundraising for that and we're going to be replacing them all. So we'll talk about that in a short bit. And then as we talk about cross training for uh, retiring positions. So let's get into it. So one of the things, um, especially if, if any of you are um, you know, winter sports, Obviously, most of our fall sports are almost done or are going to be done here in the next month or so. But we're coming into winter and then spring. So it's time to start getting your stuff updated and going through that process, right? Making sure that we have the right president and treasurer, which is crucial for the check request system to work properly uh, and other things. So um, I'm going to kind of show you what these new things are going to be able to do. But note at the bottom here, as we always do, if you have any new coaches or new people in your booster, they need to register on the Grizzly Pride site. Okay. Um, if you don't know where to go for that, there's the URLs for it, but I'll also show you on the Grizzly Pride site. It's very simple. We have a volunteer center and a coach center, and they can register on there. All right, so let's take a quick look at the... Uh, New stuff. Oh, that's that one. Yeah. All right, so we have two new things. Uh, one of them's live, the other one's coming, as I said, in a couple of weeks. So right now, if you're not sure who is set up for your check request system, and this is available to anybody uh, to fill out, you can come in, put in your name, email, phone number, and pick a club uh, from the drop down. And then, oh, this is the update one. So uh, pick a club and put in your email address, and it will email you who the current people are on file. That, will help you to know if you need to make a change or help validate that your change went through once you get the email saying, hey, your updates have gone through. So if you have emailed us currently and said, hey, we need to update some people and you're not sure if it happened or didn't happen, you can go run and check that. And if not, let us know or go uh, wait you know, a week and go fill it out yourself. So this is a great tool, uh, especially if you, as you have new people coming in for your new season. Just go run. You can check to see who's currently set up and see if you need to make any changes. If you do need to make changes, this is what you're going to fill out for that. Okay? So we're going to get some information from you. You're going to pick a club. And then you're going to tell us what info you need to change, right? Maybe you're changing both your treasurer and president, or maybe you're just uh, changing out one of those. So you'll basically put that information in. You'll put in their full name and their email address and you'll submit this. So what's going to happen when you do this is it's going to um, take that request. It's going to email the current people in those roles and ask them to approve the change. So this will prevent fraud from people just trying to change stuff without asking. But, you know, 
that person will then do it. If you have, for some reason, something happened, your treasure is no longer available, they are not responding to you, you know, falling out of some kind, we can still manually do it on the back end. Um, and that would prevent you from using this, but hopefully we're, we're never in that situation. So essentially this will email out. It's like the check request system. You'll say accept or deny. And uh, if it's approved, then it will update all of the requests that are in, in our system and get it done. So this will, this is one of the things that has been asked for because this is kind of a pain every time you guys need to change something currently. And it's a pain for us. Any questions on that? Uh, one quick question, Stephen. Did you say this is not going to be live until next week? That will probably not be live until next week or even the week after. The, as you can see, the forms are here, but we have to finalize some of the back into it. And I'll send out an email as soon as it's live. So if I, I think we have one request that came in in the last few days, if we uh, will still be doing those manually. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, so this is our website. I mean, how many? Everybody should be familiar with our Grizzly Pride site, right? Is there anybody not familiar with the Grizzly Pride site? I'm sure what it is. Okay. <laughs> um, so grizzlypride.com is our main site for all of boosters, athletics, clubs. Um, and it's also our main tool set by which we drive all of those things, all the decisions we make um, and the communication that we funnel. So it allows us to do the registration for teams. Um, the teams can, you know, parents can fill out the information, pay their donations to the clubs, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then it tracks it like a database for us. Uh, so we know who has and hasn't paid um, and how that uh, is flowing through. The coaches can use it to communicate out with the teams. They can adjust their schedules, uh, get RSVPs from the athletes, whether or not they're going to make it to an event or not make it, uh, or to a practice, things of that nature. Uh, and it puts all of the teams on the same platform. So when we came on, I think it was five years now, we said, or so when we came on, uh, you know, four years ago, we didn't have anything. So every club did whatever they wanted to do. Some clubs had really nice stuff. Others, other people had this. Other people had nothing and had no idea what to be doing with. So we kind of saw that we needed to help standardize our platforms for everybody um, so that we are all on the same level playing field. Right. You didn't have football with uh, fancy stuff. And you know, girls golf with nothing. They have five people with no money. Uh, so this is something that is paid for by the boosters. Yeah, is this different than sports engine? This is sports engine. Okay, I just want to make sure because I don't see it anywhere that you said it was on the previous. It was slide. okay. I know. I just want to make sure we're still talking about sports. It engine. is a sports engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that. Yeah, the sports well. engine is the platform. Got like a couple of minutes before the the game was late starting. Do you want me to answer any questions? Does anybody have any questions for I'm, Tim? I'm I don't have any right now. Right <laughs> yeah. uh, are there any questions from, from our side of the house, from, from the sports athletics side? Are we all good? Does everybody understand what the district did last year in regards to the um, stipend payments? I'm going to talk about that in a bit, so I'll okay. go over it. There, there is rhyme and reason to it. Um, I will tell you that. Um, there's, you know, no rhyme, there's no rhyme or reason to it, but I understand the logic of why they I, I would disagree. I think there is. And it's it's a district that's trying to, you know, run 1,200 employees and trying to differentiate between another roughly 800 or so volunteer booster paid coaches is an issue for the limited personnel that they have. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean we like it, but it is a reality. Uh, and then additionally, I just want to make sure, as always, that the, the coaches are communicating with all of you. There's a strong rapport. Um, there should be a relationship between the master booster and the head coach. Um, and so hopefully you guys are all communicating with your IC laughter. Because you know why. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> uh, question, ma'am? The spirit website. Yeah. Our people don't like it. 
it's yeah, I, I don't really care. <laughs> it's expensive. It is. Um, it you know, it, it it sounds good on paper, um, and you know, we've been trying to develop for a while. But really, the only people with the bandwidth to do what we kind of wanted, which was the breadth of product, were people that were going to charge a lot. A lot, yeah. And so, really, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board on that. Um, and whether it's me working with some local people. Until then, are programs allowed to do what they've done? To not have... outside of our branding. So there are certain things like I don't want you guys just, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to grab a bear from the web. Now, I use our branding, and I would say, what, what, what program are you aquatic? So Jay, Jay should have everything we... Jay has everything, but yeah. she's also, she doesn't want to... Sure, and she, her and I are, of... are, are certainly strong enough to where she can pick up the phone and call me, hey, Tim, here's what I want to do. Does this work? Yeah, yeah, I just didn't know to carry back to our boosters. That was one of the questions there. Yeah, if, 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 again, my, my goal is always trying to do what's best for our programs and our kids. Um, it makes rhyme and reason to have a universal web page. Absolutely. Um, what we got isn't necessarily what I hoped for, though. Um, I, you know, I think that uh, are the products on there stuff that I would really want to get myself and wear? Probably not. Um, and and certainly maybe not the price point that, that they were paying. You heard about the price point yeah. and shipping and, sure. and that sort of thing. So um, again, the, the upside is that it's all buy and ship. You know, Dave orders something for Ryan online. It's all screened. It's all done. It goes directly to him. There is no mechanism at the school. There's no bringing it all to the school. Then I have like on our Grizz on our Grizz packets that we did for for your kids. If you got that, that it was like a nightmare. Oh, it was so hard. <laughs> My kids wanted it. By the time I got to it, it was gone. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's not easy for us. And again, I'm a gov econ teacher, who's also an athletic director at the biggest school in Northern California that's got both genders and it's not private. Um, so my first obligation is to teach Gov Econ. Absolutely. And secondary to that, I have 180 employees, you know, 58 teams. Um, and so when you say, hey, Tim, you got the bandwidth to go run a store out of your classroom, no. You'd be like me calling you, I can't get in the snack bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of it's just logistics, I mean, really, I can't tell you how often I feel like we dropped the ball in logistics. Even getting coaches the right keys, these things are the bane of my existence. And they stop working. Oh, I'm the AD. I go to put money away, and I can't get into where <laughs> the safe is. <laughs> this is good. Uh, but again, it's one of those things that's like the late start. Somebody had an idea that it would be a brilliant thing to do. Oh, let's, let's increase security by having electronic keys. Again, without understanding consequence. You know, what's the downside? What's the opportunity cost of that decision? Like with the late start, no offense, I'm not a late start person because it's really been difficult to navigate and I don't believe kids are sleeping more. So again, you, you have a solution you think rectifies a problem and they don't match. And just from my econ brain, that drives me insane. Um, you know, there should have been a better approach to that and there's a better approach than these keys as well. Can I jump on your question then? So, like, lacrosse is coming up for us. So, as long as we, we cancel lacrosse, that is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> funny. You actually said that was a really good face. <laughs> well done. Lots of experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, as long as we have the proper logos, we can maybe do a team sweatshirt or something. Yes. Okay. Just work with me. Again, I'm trying so hard to brand us. Okay. Um, yep. You know, really, we're behind the eight ball. When you look at who we are as a school, and what we've been able to do in that regard, it's pretty piss poor. Um, we have people all doing their own thing, and that's not really in our best interest. You know, we want there to be a Granite Bay brand. Pardon me? Realistically, someone with a cricket could go make shirts yes. for- and they, and they have, and you've seen them at local, yeah. you know, not Walgreens, but I don't know, whichever one is. Walgreens, yeah, it's like that yeah. around. So. Yeah. Well, um, Laura did give me logos because, like, even when you do the senior posters, I'm assuming you want like yes. universal logos. Correct. So that's what I got them from yes. her. So we're still using the G. We are. Okay, and then we've got the Bears ones. Correct. Okay. The Bears. Um, Bears. And we're going to talk about logos in okay. here. It's one of the and there's so specific we'll font, etc. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Bob. I didn't recognize the name of Laura back there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I know we've gotten a lot better this year compared to last year with like social media and recognition mm -hmm. of the school and the school accounts. Um, there's still kind of a disconnect there. 
where like cross country will get completely left off. Of no. Basically. If race was still around, it wouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was just, you know, and I, I've been in communication with Sir Okay. And, you know, and it's getting better. And it's really sad to see some of those kids like, oh, they don't care about cross country. They, they do, obviously. So that's <laughs> that's frustrating. So. If, if you hit through, are you texting them or emailing them? Uh, I, I text them. Like, I'll, I'll catch it. I'll be like, Ooh, actually, we have two on schedule this week. Yeah. We have a big break coming up. We placed first at a. Now, Sit won't know that if the schedule that Carla turned in doesn't say that. So I don't know that that's the case. Okay. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> Underline. Uh, um, so, so, I mean, it's getting better. And I yeah. really do appreciate that. Um, but I guess, like, I know he has students helping him too, but that's something that you can emphasize of like. I will talk to him tomorrow morning because I know that we have a couple things going on right now. There's a the reason I'm going back out there. We're playing for first place today for girls water polo golf. Is, yeah. I don't know how golf did, but they're trying to win their seventh straight section title. Um, that's not easy to do. It's not easy to win one, much less seven. Is that part of the social media you were talking about? You don't have like a person doing it. We're not getting that out there. Is it? Well, so my, my recommendation would be you, like in your case, maybe it's, you know, Mr. Atkins here is sending directly the information to Citroen. That's how it should be working. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I do think it's kind of nice. We actually have a platform now. There is, you know, I've learned a little bit about how to use Instagram. <laughs> Like, we're available to two now. You've got the, the Riz Nation, and then the kids one. And then you have the baby Riz by one, the Citroen one. So there's the two. And well, it's athletics of one's. One's Riz Nation leaders, yeah. right? Yes. And the other one is. And then they really should be more symbiotic. I think they are. I, I think trying that, to. Be. I know they do. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's the hope. Um, but I'll, I'll chat with Citroen. Making a lot of progress. So, so, Okay. Anything else before I run back out there? It's cold, so I'm in no hurry. How's it going so far? Uh, it hadn't started yet. Okay. The boys had just okay. finished. The boys, the boys won. Really late. Yeah, they're running really late, but it's senior night, so I, you know, oh. they've done some some ceremonies, um, and so, but it's it's going to be tight. And then our coach angered the referees right before the game. That's oh, always that's, a, a that's always a solid strategy to endear yourself to the officials right before the match starts. So we'll see. Anyway, thank you so much yeah. for coming out, you guys. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay warm. Uh, I, have, but I, didn't, I didn't really dress appropriately. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, and if there are more questions, some of what we just talked about, I'm going to be going over. And uh, if not, we'll cover some of it at the end as well. Uh, so diving back in. So uh, for Sports Engine, we uh, this is the first year we've gotten pretty much all of our clubs on boarded. Uh, thank goodness. Uh, thanks to Margo and Amanda are handling that. Um, we will reach out to you. So if you are a winter sport or a spring sport, be look on uh, be on the lookout for emails from us saying, hey, let's schedule getting your registration done. Uh, we're, we're no longer waiting for you guys to come to us. We're going to come hound you. Uh, and find you so that we can get it done. Um, and we've already started that for winter. Are there any in particular you know that for winter sports we haven't done yet that we need to so we've hear from? So wrestling, wrestling is done. Um, um, we, Amanda and I prepped all of the new forms and um, we, we composed an email to send out to everybody of this is what we need. Yeah. So basically we took last year's registration forms um, and created a new form, and then we just need to make sure that you know what are what fees are you charging, and you know what what are your you know, tryouts are all next week, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. we'll get the, I'll get that out publicly tomorrow. Um, and we'll let you know obviously when we send that email what things to prep for, what things we need, as Margo just said. Uh, but we're trying to be more proactive with that, and that is one of the roles that we have this this uh, from last year and this year. Um, that is potentially ending at the end of this year. So we really need to find some people to do that. Otherwise, it's going to be really messy for next year. And we do have some some football parents that I think might might be interested in helping. So we're going to pursue that. But um, we do need people. 
uh, Booster's website. So it has lots of info. I know we get requests like, hey, where's our tax ID? Or where's our filled in W-9? Or where do I find information about this or that? It's on our gbhboosters.org website. Okay. Um, we try to make it as easy for you so you don't have to hunt us down and try to find out what you need. Always look there first, because if you don't, one of the first things we're going to say is, have you looked at our website for that? Because uh, the answer is typically going to be it's all, all there. Uh, we do have some new stuff coming uh, for that. Uh, we are, as part of rolling out that ticket system I told you about, we are rolling out a knowledge base. So we will continuously add in questions that keep getting repeated to us. What does the treasurer do? What's my role? How do we do this? Where, what fundraising platforms can we use? All that stuff will eventually be in the knowledge base. So, you know, hopefully by the time I leave, we'll have hundreds of questions in there with answers uh, to make it easy to also transition from yourself to new people as they come on. You can walk them through the site and say, look, go study this for a day. You'll learn everything that you need to know. Uh, it's a, a company called Issue Track. Yeah, we were uh, blessed that they wanted to work with us, and they're actually donating it to us. It's fourteen grand a year, and they're donating it. Uh, and hopefully, that'll be coming in the next week or so. I've got some travel, but we we got all the contracts signed and everything starting to be set up. So. <laughs> A little bit of a react because I'm traveling for a couple weeks. Um, stipend update. So we, we talked about it a little bit. Um, there is no rhyme or reason to it. They just got lazy and don't want to give us three tax rates. They didn't want us to have to figure it out and do the math because most of their schools don't have a calculator like we do. So they were constantly getting it wrong and constantly asking the district, what was the rate again? How do I do it? How do I calculate this math? Um, so ultimately, that was the decision they made to just say no more. So whatever the check they get is what they're going to do. Now, we have discussed with them the way we're doing it is different than what most of the schools are doing. We still have our calculator, but we're going to calculate it at what the teacher rate used to be. So before we had two rates, teacher, non-teacher, and then that adjusted the, the tax percentage or the check because they are no longer going to give us rates. We're just going to use the teacher one, which means some people you pay, if they aren't teachers, they're going to get more money than maybe they you wanted them to. So if you wanted them to have a thousand and they're not a teacher, they're going to get eleven hundred in their check. Okay. Um, and if they're a teacher, they're going to get a thousand. Um, and there's just no way for us to do anything other than that. Uh, but they have approved us continuing to do our process. Uh, the way that we have been doing it. So our uh, stipend calculator on the website is already updated. I have the new schedules up there. It's got all the right stuff. So when you're ready to do stipends, just go put in there what you would like to pay the coach and it'll tell you approximately what to pay. And it is what it is. Um, if, if people complain to you that they didn't get what they thought, they thought they were getting a thousand, they got nine fifty, nothing we can do about it. Just tell them they get up with the school district. We're, we're not going to be doing more checks to try to balance out and fix. Um, so we're doing the best we can. So more often than not, we're going to overpay them. But there's a small chance that maybe they get a little underpaid than what they think they should. Okay. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, so one of the things this year that we're officially telling you to do is go ahead. The only paperwork you need to send to the school is just a statement of purpose. You don't need a check request form with that. Just a statement of purpose. Once you get that signed and back to you, then you'll fill out an electronic check request and just put in there a stipend for a coach's name and attach the statement of purpose and we'll handle it from there. Eventually, we would like to have an official process more automated fully to get the school's e-signature and all that kind of stuff, but um, at least we'll simplify for the time being submission to us. And that way we can track them because we've had concerns where people were emailing them, they emailed the wrong people, and they didn't get to the right people. And so now you just submit a request and we'll get it done. 
Uh, same stuff as normal. You got to get it to us. Um, you know, typically the first or second week of the month because it's got to be to the district and there's got to be time to get it through the check request process. Um, and then they get paid on the 10th of the following month. So if you get it to me and uh, we don't get it to the district until the 23rd, they're not getting it for two months. Okay. So we have that issue with lacrosse. Um, when does it need to be in by for your end of school year? Uh, we we operate year round, so there's no end of school year for us. Now the district does close for some of that time. I'm not yeah. quite sure when they do, and I know they have some staff here and there to keep doing certain things. But um, you know, for the end of the year, my recommendation is. Unless you have concerns that they're not going to do what you need, which does happen. Sometimes coach doesn't finish out or and so you're going to pay them less than you should. If you're halfway through your season and everything's going the way you should, just submit the request. You don't need to wait until the end of the season to submit it. We'll pay them anytime you want, as long as you got the funds for it. Any questions on stipends? Because I know this was changed last year and it was quite frustrating for all of us. Yes. I missed the part when you talk about the statement of purpose. Is that the process already? Our treasurer and coach usually work together. I want to make sure. I'm yeah, so there's just, but sometimes um, people were filling out two forms. They're filling out the old paper check request okay. form. We don't need that. Just, and there's no, and that's not on any of our websites, but the school still has this old stuff and we keep asking them to get rid of it. But so, yeah. So Thank just you. the statement of purpose, the one form, there's like three things on it. You fill out, sign, send it to the school to sign. All right, so electronic tickets. So we have this year started fully using this. We rolled it out last year. Um, we use hometown ticketing. So uh, this year, um, I think most sports, uh, I don't know if they've done it to all. Uh, Jason's in charge of it, but we're using hometown ticketing. That's something that we help uh, fund and manage uh, with Jason Sidorud, who um, is doing all the game stuff, but it allows us to do electronic tickets for them. Um, if you're kind of having to help, if you're one of those sports, aquatics is one regularly that, you know, you're kind of managing your own gates or, you know, maybe one of the uh, ADs is coming and doing it. We'll, we'll want to get them into this um, and manage that. So, um, so we'll, we've kind of handed that off to Jason to that way he knows everything that needs to get done but if he's not doing it as we have heard about social media then we just need to let us know and we'll work with him to get it done yeah I know I'm sorry I'm so full of comments and questions no, please. last year once an event started we could no longer get the tickets for that has that been and there were a lot of little glitches with the program that we received feedback on was that something that has been addressed yes. since yeah, so so the, the problem with that ever, if it ever happens again, is just that whoever set up that event set it to end ticket sales and to be started the game instead of the end of the game. Yeah, um, but uh, Jason's aware of that and should be setting it to at the end of the event is when those sell. Are we going to still do cash? So we're trying to move away from it. Um, you know, a football game when you see like a grandma standing there trying to figure out how to scan a barcode. Yeah, like I just wish because you go to some of these other schools and it's a disaster because they don't have cash. Yeah, so. and, and we we still plan to to some extent uh, cash is becoming more difficult, especially now that we don't have a ticket booth uh, because they tore that down, um, you know, while they're building us a new one. Um, and it slows things down. So we are trying to figure out a better process for that. We're, we're buying extensions and stuff that we could set up to say, hey, this is a cash line and it's going to be for those slow people. And so if you come and need to do that, we're finding most people are just paying in advance. Uh, so we, we've had a good adoption of it. People are getting used to it. Ours is much easier to use than GoFan, which is what all the other schools use. Um, you know, and that one's a pain. You have to have their app. You have to. Now, ours, you can print out a piece of paper. So, um, it'll give us a lot of doing, uh, senior discounts. Uh, we do. Uh, and so, if it's not labeled as such, it's, yeah, typically it's listed as, 
students last okay, senior. Okay, so last Friday's game didn't list senior. No, These are just saying that. So I was like, oh, we got rid of senior discount. Not yeah. a big deal. So that is what that is. Yeah. Okay. So uh, last year, I tried to help run it all so that we'd make sure we get it all done. And the problem is it's just too much stuff. I own a business. So we yeah. try to do this and that and this and this just didn't work. So this year, we handed it to Jason and said, hey, go meet with this company, learn how this works, and you got to do it. But those are good feedback that I can take to him when I meet with him regularly and say, hey, don't forget the senior stuff. Don't forget this. And we'll keep improving it. You know, um, football, we had a whole section uh, where you can kind of pick seats um, and you can do VIP tickets and things like that. Those are things that they were toying with and maybe didn't roll out as smoothly as they wanted. So next year we'll have that. So the whole middle section is going to be two seat and it'll be VIP uh, where you can pick a seat and that'll be your seat for that game. Um, the a uh, ticket system can be used for anything. So right now you're thinking, oh, sports game, I got that. But uh, we've had people use it for their fundraisers. Uh, Touchdown Club use it for their fundraiser. So will take us through that. Because it makes it much easier to, when they show up for the fundraiser, to scan them in. Bink, bink, bink. And you're tracking that who all came, who didn't come, uh, making sure that they have everything they need. So in the event that you would normally sell a ticket of some kind, to come through here. Is there fees associated with that? Uh, there are, but the uh, end person pays them and they're tiny. So they're a oh. dollar a ticket plus the credit card fee. And so far, we've not had any complaints from parents on the fees because we're, you know, think about a ticket master. I mean, they charge a $35 fees for this, you know, just to buy a $10 ticket. Yeah, so. so the fee is to the the person, not the yeah. club. And the club can eat it if they want. So uh, if you're doing a fundraiser and you're selling a ticket for 50 bucks, you know, I'm going to eat the dollar fifty or whatever. You can choose to eat that, and that way it's $50 ticket. Otherwise, you just let them pay for it. Uh, Sober grad night used it this last year, right? How, yeah. how did that work for checking people That's in? Great. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, and I think the feature that people don't realize is, I heard you mentioning it earlier, is if somebody doesn't have their ticket, you can look them up yeah. by their name and, and, and get track them. Quickly and, yeah, and yeah. quickly and literally you just start entering the thing and it's super easy. And, um, and people will try to scam. So it does help us to prevent that. Well, we had that. Uh, we, yeah. we, we had that for several grad and we're like, sweetie, you did not buy a ticket. Yeah, exactly. Your name's not <laughs> in my list. You did not buy a ticket. <laughs> yeah, but here, here's the QR code right outside. Go buy your ticket. Exactly. We'll happily get yeah. you in. Is it the same site like when you buy your yearbook? No, no, okay. no that's, that's not a fun site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. No, 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 no. Uh, definitely not. No, this is. Uh, yeah, and this is built into our Grizzly Pride site. So there's a box office and it lists all the games uh, on campus and their tickets and you can buy them in advance. Yeah, so box. that's actually something uh, uh, when you're done with this portion, I would like you to show people that is the hardest thing for people to find. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, when you, it's in the top left corner and you and you click on it and it opens up, it'll say clubs, athletics, da, 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 and it says box office. And that's where all of these tickets are. Because everyone's yeah. like, I can't find the ticket for the game, and I can't find. So yeah, I, I it's it. in box office. It's she, she puts on her Instagram, so I go to hers. I'm all, how do you say that's right? <laughs> Please yeah, and it's just grizzlypride.com forward slash box office. So if you're making a link on your social media or something that's easy to remember, is slash box office. But it's in the box office, right? But uh, it's in there. I say, like, when you guys talk about your Yo, yeah, well, all that will be in there, and we'll have even fan and parent versions. Yeah, that would be so so easy. Like if you have like a quick video of this. Yeah, yeah, and we even have some provided by hometown ticketing for like, oh, I'm buying a ticket. How does this work? And has the mobile app work? And we'll put all that up there as well, so people can do it. Um, so we have we rolled this out last year. Uh, we haven't used it this year because uh, the choir and drama were already on. A system, but they're hoping to get them off of that. Um, so we have the ability to sell again, even in the stadium, but especially in the theater, reserve seating. Um, and as you can see here, we actually did this with drama. So each of these color codes are different 
prices as well. So if you want these prime seats, you're going to pay $30 a ticket instead of the $10 that the people in the purple have, right? Um, so it's just another way that you can, one, make it much more convenient. I know as a parent, if I can pick my seat and I don't have to show up an hour early for a choir thing yeah. and find the right seat, I'm going to, yeah. I'll pay, I'll pay that dollar fee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we were hoping, yes, we're hoping. But everybody should be using this. If you do something in the theater, there's no reason not to use this. Yeah. I have a really silly question. Is there a way, like, you can't let people just skip a seat? You know how, like, you're trying to get three and sometimes it's just one blank? That would be a downfall to, like, these programs. Like, right? theaters do that now. You can't yeah. Have to. I, don't, I don't know the answer to that, but we can look into it. I mean, it's an interesting thought, for sure. Well, just because I could imagine people just skipping one and all of a sudden you have 20 seats that have singles all over the place yeah so i was just curious <laughs> I, hey that's kind of a smart thing now i'm thinking like okay i'm gonna buy a seat one over there and one over here and that way there's a middle one there and then yeah. i get all of them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh i i don't know i don't think so i'm guessing not i don't think it's as sophisticated as that but um and if people come to the door to buy tickets to the theater because they didn't know or they just to get their tickets ahead of time, do they end up with those single seats? There you go, perfect. <laughs> well, and that's it. So this can be with our box office application on the phone. You can sell these at point of sale, at gate, with credit cards and everything. Um, you know, so it allows you to continue. You don't have to send them. With the sports, we're trying to just give them a QR code and say, hey, just go scan the code over there and do it because it is a little simpler. For theater, people are going to just line up at the box office and expect they can buy a ticket, and you'll be able to do that with this. Yeah, this is only our second year of doing reserve seating, like for all the performing arts stuff, and it's still difficult to get people on board with buying their tickets in advance. Like this last one, we generated, you know, 1300 online and 750 at the door. Yeah. So it's it's a process. But yeah, I mean, the system that we're currently using does all this too, plus live streaming, which is why Keeps is leaning towards using the other system right now. Yeah. But you know. Well, the problem that you have with that is now you're only, the only website is yours. Mm -hmm. when, when we use our platforms, we're marketing all this to everybody. So everybody's seeing this, not just a small amount of people who might go to the, to the website. So the, those are things we got to work on. I think the live streaming we kind of talk about, I think there's solutions that we can do, including the fact they don't charge for $0 tickets. So you use this platform to sell your tickets and then go set them up as a ticket for the few people that are going to live stream. I don't know. How many did you have at the, the last quarter? I, I'm not sure how many live streamed. I, I've talked to people and quite a few people did. So if it's yeah. 10 or 20, then it technically the loot is platform free. If you just make it a zero dollar ticket and go sign it up and they'll get the ticket in their mail with the link to do the live stream. And then you can still sell them the ticket here, which will be a little easier to manage. But we'll figure that out. Um, OK, check request refresher. So we do this at the start of every year because we do have new people who aren't really familiar with our check request system or our deposit system. Um, so anything that you guys are asking for reimbursement for or payment for has to go through our check request system. Okay? We don't manually print checks. You can't ask for a check. Um, very seldom do we ever get cash in advance. There's only a couple of times we'll approve doing that. Um, so everything goes through the check request system. Um, most people pay for whatever it is, you know, the balls, you know, for football, okay? So a parent will just go pay for that on a credit card, go submit a check request for reimbursement, attach the receipt, and then within a week or so, they've got their money back, okay? Um, anyone can fill out the request. So it does not need to be you guys as boosters. It does not need to be your treasurer. It does not need to be your coach on behalf of a parent. So most parents fill these out on their own. And that's what we want to encourage. So if they bring you a bunch of receipts, instead of just saying, okay, I'll do that for you, what I would suggest, sit down, take two minutes, say, hey, did you know you can come right here and you can just take a picture, do one of them for them, and then that way you've trained them to fish on their own. One transaction per request. So this is still one we deal with. Uh, sometimes a coach may wait in the season, but I hear, here's 20 receipts to the treasurer. Uh, please don't put them, that's 20 requests. 
I know it's annoying, but I wasn't the one that waited until the end of the season to give you 20 receipts. So just tell them to give them to you as they go or to fill these out when they do them as they're going. Um, most are pretty good, but we do have some. Not naming names, Huey. Uh, but we, we have some that will submit quite a few on one. The problem is, is one, it gets messy. More often than not, there's addition problems, so we didn't add them up properly, and they're shorting themselves or too much, and we have to just kill it, and then you're going to start all over anyway. So it's one per. The other thing you can do that I think people don't realize is, is so for example, when I reserve Sunsplash for several grad night, I can do a deposit from the same check from this. Like I just submit the, the deposit. Yeah, the invoice. I just submit the invoice. I don't prepay it because I, I have time to go through this and yeah. do this and just submit. You just submit and it's a deposit. You just make sure they have it on there that you, you have, you know, whatever your deposit is required and you can submit that. And then they, then you get the bill on the back end. And when you have to pay the balance, then you just know that you already have it. Right. Yeah, anything that you know in advance, you, you know yeah, a month in advance, can. right? That I'm buying new equipment or something. Registering for tournaments, registering for things. Absolutely, especially the tournaments and tournaments and all that kind of stuff. Just that can all that. go through and go directly to Folsom High School or yeah. whatever high school. You just have to make sure you get their email. A lot of the stuff we've noticed, like I know for basketball, but some of the stuff doesn't have the person's email on it. You have to kind of hunt, like, who does it go to? Who is the check going to? Is it, you know? So. It's not all e-check. We found that for, it's all e -check. for tournaments and things, they're so resistant to e-check. So nobody wants that. Uh, and again, more often than not, because they don't understand. It. They can print the check. They can print a check. So it's no different than they a physical check. I, I understand that I know them not understanding, but right. we try to communicate that to them. And it's all these, you know, big conversations and well, you write me a check and then you get reimbursed and a yeah. coach at one place. Like I can't write anymore. No, checks. no. <laughs> and I would just say you you'll get the check in the mail. Yeah. I yeah. for track, uh, because we do have some really big events to go to as well. And some of them are like, hey. I have to show up with a check at the gate, otherwise you're not you're not allowed. So I just came up with kind of a form that now I email out to those tournaments or whatever uh, track meets ahead of time when I get the flyer that says, "Hey, you have to show up with a check physically in your hand, otherwise no admittance," kind of thing. And I it just basically explains, "Hey, we switched over to this e-check system. This is how it works. This is what you'll get." You know, this and that you can print it out if I can give you like the check request once it's been approved and I get that email and it's got the check number and er like everything if I send this to you does that count as check at the door if I have proof for you that your check is approved and check. on the mm -hmm. yeah and then and in the mail to you you take that and I have never had anyone say no just and then I just keep that email like, oh, you, you, okay, copy and paste, send to you, change the name at the top. <laughs> so. and I also find that I get my, I, myself, am too accommodating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I, and I started to say, sorry, this is what our school is doing, and they really don't want us to do that. Yeah, and that's kind of all I said. And they can't say, then what are they going to say? No. Like, like, this is what our district is doing, and this is what we're supposed to be doing, even if they didn't do it. I've just found that saying that actually helps more yeah. than trying to yeah. accommodate it or figure, oh, you know. So, yeah. And more so of them are preempting and say, this is what we're doing now. Yes. And we're, this Can is you what we're required to us, do. Please? Yeah, because we don't, we can't show yeah. up with a check. Can you just, send out that draft email to the different programs? Because maybe we yeah. don't understand the ins and outs of the e check. I know we had so many emails back and forth with you guys and we felt bad, but we're just trying to. Yeah. Figure it out. If maybe you can send out what you said to all Definitely. the programs so that then we have that to send with a better understanding of what we have of the e-check process. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's getting better now that we've been doing it for a while. I mean, we've processed over 2,000 checks through this system. People are getting used to it. Um, so year after year, it gets a little easier and easier with these schools and stuff as well. Uh, in fact, I don't think in the last year and a half we've had anybody decline. Now we've had people say, oh, I don't want to, or we can't take e-checks, but in the end, they always figure it out because it's not 
you know, they're always thinking, oh, it has to be deposited electronically or something. And they don't, they're like, we can't do that. We need to have a physical check. Yeah, and we put it. Is there yeah. something yeah, I wonder if Tim can send out mm -hmm. to all the athletic directors? Yeah, yeah, and we can do so that. It uh, says we, our process is electronic. If you yes. need a physical check, you can print it out yourself. Yeah. That's basically yeah, that what my instruction Right. I think from and it, it does say that also in okay. every check request. So every person who's going to get a check in the first email they get, it explains we use a new system. You'll be able to print a check okay. or you can okay. electronically deposit. That's your choice. It's free. There's no cost to you. You're not, there's no fees. So we do explain that in every single request. So uh, every person. The very first request. No, all of them. That they get. No, Intermice, so Intermice submitted request, to get like a exactly. refund. Yeah. Yeah. It came with this like presumptive email. So like for a free request, like you're saying, because like yeah. for shopping for football, like you would just submit it that way and get your check. And it would come with an email like your request has been received and it had the directions. And yeah. then all of a sudden you get your check. Yeah. So I think you get it every time you put in a request. Yeah, you do. Yeah. The, the yeah. instructions for that. Now, I think what, what Jess is trying to explain is once you've done something, like if you what mine, for example, is direct deposit. Yeah. Moving forward, I don't have to do anything That's anymore. So once the oh, once a check request has been processed, it the email comes says you're going to get this direct deposit in your bank account in one to two days, right? Because it just repeats whatever you've done before. Um, you know, so if you printed it before, it's going to assume you want to print it again and just do that. It won't ask you, so it simplifies the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Submit uh, the request. Then, like, usually you submit the request and then you get the auto kickback email, right? And then I'm not getting that email. And then, like, somehow, I don't know if there's a glitch or something, but like, it's getting lost. Like, we're, we're submitting and then the auto kickback doesn't come and then it does, like, Julia doesn't get the email and then it doesn't come to me. I don't know if there's like. We, we did have a glitch. Um, as best as I know, it isn't happening again. So if it is, we need to look into it. But we did have a glitch where the system uh, essentially stopped sending out emails um, a couple of months ago, whenever that was. Yeah. I think you guys were the well, ones who brought it to our attention. But yeah, we just come on to it again. Like, just saying, keep like, hey, I haven't got my money from. Uh, when, you when did you submit that? And last week, and I'm going through an email. But email, they don't have anything. So send, send me offline and let me know which one that is and we can go look through it because okay. um, I think I've seen some from you guys that have gone through and been approved recently. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it, and, and that's one of the things that we need to encourage. And if you don't, if you know, like, okay, when I submit this, I get an email as a treasurer and you don't see that, that's a red flag. Let us know. Right. We want to make sure, you know, that we're proactive on that, not waiting because we did have a glitch in the system that got fixed. Um, but we had three or four requests that ultimately had to kind of be re-triggered because it hadn't processed them properly. Um, and that issue went away, so it shouldn't be back. But, you know, this is good to hear and we can take a look at that. Uh, deposit refresher. So our bank is Tri Counties Bank. Um, that's where you guys go. We have one right down the street at uh, um, Douglas and Sierra College. Um, and everybody should have their own deposit stamp. Okay, uh, it won't necessarily have your club name on it. Some do. If you had legacy ones, the new ones don't have any club names on them. But that has the account number and everything on. So you don't need any info to go in and deposit a check as long as you stamped them. If you go in without that, these people can't figure it out. You know, they won't let you deposit and you'll be calling me and I'll try to help you, but if I'm traveling, you're gonna miss out. So make sure your treasurer has a deposit stamp. If you don't have one and you know you don't have one, we have extras now. We got uh, a new set in uh, a couple months ago where we have them to give out if you need them. Um, when you do a deposit, you need to go and fill out our deposit uh, form on our website. And when you do that, you put in every check, not a total, 
it'll calculate the total for you and say, okay, all these checks add up to this dollar amount. Um, and we do that because we need to be able to track individual donations and stuff for that, right? <laughs> so if you're putting in a group total, we have no idea who these checks are coming from. And we do need to know that um, if we ever need to produce a report for that. Um, so make sure you do that. I think at one point we had some issues where it wasn't properly letting you put in cents um, you know, in there that's been fixed a couple months ago. So you can put down to the penny that you deposited. Um, if uh, everybody gets reports automated now, so we did change how that worked. It used to be that we would basically manually send out um, reports to you guys, uh, your treasurer and president. In fact, most presidents didn't get these reports, only the treasurers did. We changed all of that this year. So now, as long as your information is updated in our system for check requests, both of those people will get the QuickBooks reports. Okay, and that will always update. So if you go fill out a new person every other month in the new system we have, they those new people will automatically get it because we now tie it to that system for the reports. Um, so no more needing to manually ask us to send you um, reports. And those reports are always a rolling 90 days. So if you don't remember getting it last month, you don't need to ask us, please send us that, that last month because it's going to come on the next report. Just wait for the next report and you'll have the rolling 90 days. Uh, and then everybody gets the uh, unclaimed deposit report. So if there are deposits, you're you know expecting one. We have people who forget to fill out the deposit form online and they're like, oh yeah, I made a deposit. You can, when you get that report, just email our team, um, show a receipt of the deposit and they'll fix it and pull it off of that report, okay? Any questions on deposits? All right, fundraising platforms. So this has come up uh, a little bit this year um, as we've been talking with the uh, choir and some others. So we have Rally Up. Margo is in charge of it. We absolutely love it. It's been very smooth for clubs to use, uh, very inexpensive. No need to look at other platforms. We don't want you using other platforms. And if you do want to use another platform, you need approval from us before you can use it. So please don't go set up your own fundraising or platforms and you know, donation pages and stuff without working with us on that because we want it to go through here. Um, no raffles. So uh lacrosse we've talked about this last year as well so we have the new yeah we have the new platform for it and that's the way we're doing it moving forward and i think it worked pretty well from what i understand i think we had a few things that we would shift and do a little bit differently but i think overall we understand like what so rally up so basically so so lacrosse used to sell um their fundraiser was selling raffle tickets and each kid had to sell so many dollars worth of raffle oh, tickets. Okay. Yes. So last year was the first year because technically we're not supposed to do it. California thing. Um, so so this is are gambling. Called, it's called technically gambling. So basically it was a sweepstakes. And basically you can still draw names, you still same mm -hmm. functionality, but it's a sweepstakes and it it was electronic. So it was a double, and I can show you what I can send you the link of what we did last okay. time. Because again, we just basically took photos of it the same. It was pretty much the same things they get all the time. The Disney, different. the thing. Okay. We just called it different, and it was online. Okay. So yeah, so a sweepstake. <laughs> so so exactly. just kind of run it down. A sweepstake and a raffle are very similar. Okay. Yes. In California, raffles are gambling, and they are controlled stuff. So we used to have to pay for a permit fee. We'd have to make reports, how many tickets you sold, and you were not allowed to sell them online. You had to sell them in person only, which meant grandma in Florida could not buy a raffle ticket because she's not here in person to do so. Sweepstakes doesn't have any of those same problems and yet operates exactly the same. The only difference is a sweepstakes technically has a free entry, right? Yeah. That people can do. So there is no gamble to it. You can, you know, put in a free submission to that. It's a pain in the butt to do. So yeah, nobody's yeah. ever going to do that. I don't think that. we've actually had anybody. We didn't have no, we, we've never had we've never had one, and I don't expect we do because again, 
you just mail it in, you have to fill it out, and mail. You get, it's, it's a physical thing that you have to send to this company. Yeah, and then they have to, to approve it. it. Free one. Um, free one. Yeah. So you know, essentially, it, it gives you all the same stuff, but now you can sell them online. You don't have to sell these in person. There's no physical things you need to do. It'll automate the drawing for you, so there's no chance that somebody can say you picked your best friend out of there. I know you did. None of that, because it's all handled it's legally all through them. They do all yeah. of the drawings for you. Uh, we used it last year for lacrosse. I think it worked really well. We'll figure out if there were any gotchas and tweak those right. for this year. But no raffles. We just added no more, more no more doing that, because lacrosse was the only ones doing it. You can't do a raffle. <laughs> yeah, any kind of raffle, no matter if it's in person, it's, it's gambling. So the schools do it vaguely and they are doing it illegally. And if they get fined, they'll get fined pretty, yeah, that, pretty what easy. Is, what if you're raffling off a gift basket? Is that still? That's still, yeah, same same stuff. <laughs> yeah, and you see that in the elementary side yeah. much more, right? You know, regularly elementary fires and stuff. Right. It's against the law. <laughs> and most of them, when I've talked to them about it and I've talked to Wersky at you know, Olympus and been like, hey, did you know that do you guys file this paperwork? What are you talking about? I don't have a clue what you're talking about, you know, um, but they don't look the other way just because they're schools or charities. I mean, they are hardcore. Silent about. options are not it. Right. Yeah, right. silent yeah. options you can yeah. totally do, and this platform will do it. So we have this well, yeah, platform will do silent auctions. It'll do online auctions. It'll do everything you need to do for a fundraiser in this platform. And currently what we're doing in it, so um, we, we tested it with lacrosse, and then... Um, uh, football used it for their luau tickets and they also created sponsor pages in it they took their existing sponsor sheet and put it yeah. we put it into rally up and then baseball excuse me basketball just did the same thing um and they uh softball did it as a store they put all of their merchandise they wanted to sell for softball on back and field use it of uh crowd forcing or crowd crowd forcing. Yeah. Yeah. So we did that, and then if you did a certain donation point, we gave you a reserved parking spot for our yeah. big home meet. So yes, so there's lots of ways. So yeah. did it too, didn't they? Did the crowdfunding. Uh, well, maybe. Clips. Yeah, I can do. It. Sure, you can do it in like. We said formerly called raffles. How we want to describe it because otherwise you were like, "What?" It's a bunch of schools, right? Because it's going to be an event on the ground. A bunch of schools coming in. You can do the basket thing on in a sweet space. You can do it as people are coming in. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. It like, has to be online. I know. I know. I know. But, but people can do it on the event, right? It doesn't have to be like a. Hey, I mean, that's for this week thing. Like it can be. Oh yeah, you can have the drawing box. scheduled for any time you want, and they'll do the drawing at that time. And you can. It even has the ability. I think you could live stream the drawing so that people out there can, can do see, stuff. But you right? can, yes, yeah, no, but you can, you can buy, you can show up to the event and still buy tickets. Yes, but it's still online with with a QR like a code. QR code. You can use a QR code and you can get it. You can spell it for the first half of the game and then stop it. Yeah. Or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually a great platform. What was that? I still don't It's just a legal terminal. You're not going yeah, two, two things. Yet. One, uh, uh, sweepstakes have to be done online through this platform. You yeah. can't sell in person at all. Okay. And two, it allows free entries. So, again, so if you ever see a sweepstakes anywhere, right? Publishers Clearinghouse, right? They want you to buy stuff. But technically, if you read the bottoms, like, hey, you get one free entry per blah, blah, blah. Yeah, awesome. Mail us here. We'll send you instructions. And if you mail this off and put a stamp on it and send it to us, we'll give you a, an entry into that. That's how it makes it not gambling, meaning that it's kind of open to everything. Um, technically, this has the same thing. So if somebody wanted to have that free entry, they could go through all that rigmarole to do it. But, you know, those aren't. We're not going to have those people, right? Because the people that are going to be wanting to do it, we're wanting to donate to you. Yeah, kind of and we don't make these public. This isn't nationwide. Because even for the big companies who use this, who do nationwide campaigns, the people who fill that out is a tiny, tiny percent. You're less than 1% of hundreds of thousands of people. So. I think like it's, it's... 
and that's a it's not like we can hold half that and then up each yeah, and we do have some of that already. So we've yeah. got. Uh, Honestly, I looked at stuff on the site well, on Rally. Yeah, all those. Yeah, demos, so we, we have these here. Kind of all of these are demo sites that show you exactly how it works. So if you're wanting to see how an auction would work, you could come here, see a sample auction. Same with the sweepstakes. Uh, you know, so we have all these here, and Margo has these links, and we can set you up with those and, and do it. Um, and it really is good. Everybody, every team should probably be doing the crowdsource funding one, right? Have every student loaded in here. You know, they have a hundred dollar goal. They send it off to grandma and everybody else on Facebook. They get their hundred dollars and everybody wins. Right. So the requests that we're getting from a lot of organizations and we're working on, I'm, I'm putting one up on the wrestling site this week is they just want a button that they can just Donate. donate. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is the platform we use for that because yeah, sure. you can't do it through anything else. And and that was this page right here. So we the plan was to proactively set these up for every team. So you'll have a donate button that you can just do. And this is year round. You can see people can make it a monthly donation if they want. So if you can convince people to pay you 25 bucks a month and you know set them up. You know. Right. Um registration yeah. yeah no the team donations still there right. team donations yeah. still there so this is just for donations or just a flat flat because, because the registration once you're done with the registration it's closed it's done just because and, and a random you I mean the only time you're in the registration is a parent is in the registration nobody else is in the registration so this would be for just a button on your website that says donate here and you would just donate and it could be for anybody. Baseball did like snap raise last year, right? Yeah, I mean, quite like, a few people have done like snap raise or others, and this replaces all of that. Snap raise was 20%. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and that's why we are telling people that you can't have any others, you know, and, and without at least checking with us first. Uh, it's just the credit card fees. No. Yeah. It's the credit card fees. Yeah. Well, and with Rally Up. They actually give us a percentage back because we are. Yeah, that, so we there's some yeah. special stuff with Rally Up. So at the end of a campaign, there's some things that because way Rally Up works is it's free to us, um, and it asks the person if they would like to make a donation. So it's kind of like GoFundMe in that sense, where they can essentially make a donation towards that, and they can put no if they don't want to. Uh, because we're a nonprofit, we actually get. Uh, some of that money back if people say yeah i'll give you five bucks or whatever towards you know the service they actually give some of that back to us as a check for your club at the end of your uh, fundraising campaign for us what we ended up raising it was uh paramount to 10 percent back okay um, but for us there's no no fees yeah and because it uses our credit card processing and we're non-profit on that it's like 2.2 percent so it's very tiny Probably is like we're doing dining the dining for dollars. Is that totally separate? Or are we not supposed to do that anymore? Yeah, and that we don't want so any fundraising outside of Rally Up, we want you guys to check with us on it. Doesn't mean you can't. And we're not looking for um like we're not telling you, hey, before you go sign up with Chipotle to do their fundraising thing, you need to ask. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about fundraising sites where you're putting something up like a snap raise or things like that. So um, yeah, yeah I, I don't because we don't really have something for that. Platform. I think right. I think the confirmation is do we have something that's going to cost you less money and right. be easier to use? Yeah. Um, right. So, 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 yeah, so that you're not paying additional out of pocket and we have they have you know, Stephen has negotiated great rates for us at using this as, you know, club wide. We're using group rates and they've, they've been very easy to use. And I, as far as I'm seeing, they're not charging. They just give um, the restaurant gives you a percentage back and you send a check to the school. Yeah, so that's easy. That that food stuff. Is, yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is fine. I just want to make sure that's still okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, but some of those we should look at how they're being set up because a lot of times if that money comes into the school, depending on how that check was worded, it's going to go into the ASB funds and not be usable. And we don't want that. The coaches don't want that either. It's, <laughs> that it really restricts what they can do with it. Uh, ASB is the associated student body. So all the coaches and teachers have their own funds 
that the school district gives them, right, or Tim gives them from the district, and they're highly restricted funds. They can only be used for certain purposes, um, and okay. we can't use any of them. So, yeah, just make sure that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if, if it's- student government is ASB, so if you, yeah, very restricted, and everything goes through the district. So like your re reimbursement or whatever is like a five person, yeah, let's put it this way. If you're not depositing them into the tri counties bank, you're doing it the wrong way and it's going into the wrong funds. Yeah, okay. like, a nice, like, like, you spot, like, pay off or, like, the high school address, but I won't expect to come. Usually, when you're communicating, yes, this is your information. This is your address. Yeah. In the organization, when I set up those dining dollars for things, it's always Granite Bay High Boosters Association slash whatever club. So that oh, does yeah. not say Granite Bay High School. Does not. Yeah. <laughs> so when you when you set it up, you say it is for because the Granite you Bay. Know, you, those, you, funds, you can say it's for the Granite Bay Media Team Club, whatever. Sorry. And then when you say, who does this check need to be made out to? That is GBHA, GB, GBHBA, yes, whatever the flash yeah. media. Yeah, funds that go to the school directly and they deposit it into ASB, you might as well count as lost. Your teacher can use them, but it's for very limited purposes. You can't go and do a, a pizza party with it. No, yeah, you can't. Not allowed. Yeah. But if you had the funds in the booster account, which you have, then you could use it for whatever you want because we're not governed by the school. So we can use them for pretty much anything we, we want to use them. Yeah. Um, scoreboard replacements. Um, we are replacing all the scoreboards on campus. Except for no, no, including aquatics. <laughs> yeah, well, I wish. Uh, I wish it has not been right since day one. I know. And we're still fighting with Colorado mm -hmm. and the school. Uh, yeah, thank, and, thank the district for that. At least you got one. I mean, they didn't want to even let you have it, but yeah, I'm not happy with that. Yeah, it's an outstanding amount due. So, can we get in on this with regard to that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, yes, you guys still owe a lot. So, if you fundraise and cover portions. So, what, what we're going to do, let me kind of go through what we're doing and how everybody's going to participate. So, it, we originally were just going to do like, hey, we're going to do the stadium. Football is going to cover most of it. Track will cover a big portion of the rest. We'll do some fundraising and be done with it. Um, we saw the need that we need this everywhere. The baseball field uh, one went out last year. They wanted like 12 grand or something to repair it. That's just beyond ridiculous for, for what it is. So we are replacing all of them. And because we're doing baseball and the gym and football, we have to do softball because we can't pick a boys team and not a girls team. So we're doing the entire campus. Um, and the front one. And the front one, yes. And we're going to get rid of that lousy thing up front. Uh, you can see some renderings of what we're talking about. Um, very similar to, if you've seen the aquatics one, just a better version of it. But it will be big and beautiful like that for all of the sports. And they will all be video scoreboards, including baseball and softball. Um, and so there'll be a lot more things you can do with it. You can sell advertising on it. There's going to be a lot of ways that we can really use these for stuff and bring us into kind of the modern aspect. Instant replay. Instant replay, absolutely. Have you seen that at Oak Ridge? Did they go to Oak Ridge? Yes, I was like, they have instant replay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought that yeah. was really cool. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see that we have renderings for uh, football. We've got some renderings of the gym. Um, and there'll be two of them in the gym. There'll be one on each wall for the gym. Um, and then we're going to get rendering this stuff for softball. So uh, I've got them coming back out mid-November. We're going to walk the campus and get new updated quotes, uh, you know, for install and everything. I expect we're going to need to raise, you know, half a million, maybe a little more. Is that per? So, like, are you giving... Literally, because, I mean, obviously football has way more people to donate than a uh, basketball team, right? Yeah. So are you kind of breaking that up to where, like, oh, you are going to do this percentage? Exactly. We're going we're gonna to take the cost, for example, for the gym and take the sports that use the gym 
and split it up and figure out how to make that work. Okay, that makes sense because like lacrosse yeah. and football and track, they yeah. all I guess. and soccer is going to be in the stadium. Uh, uh, and we're going to wait. What? I just soccer. bought them a new scoreboard for their soccer field. Uh, apparently, according according to athletics, um. Which is great. So we want everybody to utilize these things. So, so again, every, most clubs on campus, will, this impacts. Yeah. Is 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 the bottom line of it? Yeah. Um, it, it won't be cheap, um, but you know it's going to be worth it. If you guys have, you know, we some of us know people, right? And we're going to put this out to once we get everything done and we have kind of a campaign going, we're going to send it out to the entire school. So we're not going to ask you guys to just do your part. And if you don't do it, we're all screwed. We're going to all try to fundraise. And if we can do it just by sending out a message to school and somebody comes that here's a check for half a million dollars, great. Then none of us really need to do much with that. Um, but we want to have this done this year. We want it in place so that next year these are in place for next school year. Thank you. So, the um, Jason said they would probably put them in next summer. Yeah, that would be the ideal to get it done uh, across campus yeah, um, over over the summer. So um, what we're looking to do is once we have the updated quotes, we will look at how we want to manage this. Um, we've got a few ways to go. We had a company come in and say, hey, look, We'll, we'll buy all of these. We'll front all the money for it, but we get to do all the advertising and all of them. And we said no. That's what Rob <laughs> said. We, we, one, don't want to give that away uh, because I think we could really monetize that. Um, but it isn't it isn't 100% off the table because if everybody else says, oh, no, I'm dragged the feet, then I'm going to get it done one way or another. And if that means we need to sell five years of advertising to somebody else, then yeah, we'll make it work. But I, I don't think we're going to need that. I think we've got a couple people we've already talked to that might be in for a hundred grand each. Okay. Yeah. Football. Football already collected some, no? Uh, football, well, I know that they were looking to ask for stuff and they were getting updated stuff. So football and us have been discussing this for a couple of years now. So I think they have like already set up fundraise. Yeah. Uh, yes. When you say fundraise, you have, I mean, sending out an email and hoping for donations. Do you have ideas? Otherwise, what we're going to do? So here's the thought. So here's what started is that we're we're working on kind of we're going to have a fundraising committee. We've kind of started that already. I met uh, Pam Cassano and I met last week and talked to Jason Sidaru for a little bit. And again, trying to, you know, Jason's like, we need to have every sport represented. So is it a younger parent? Is it an existing parent? Um, so if you're interested in participating for your, your sport, let me know. Um, because basically what it will be is, um, you know, figuring out, okay, so, you know, what are the donation levels? I, we've been looking at, you know, Oak Ridge's fundraising sites and Rockland's and other schools, and we've reached out to some of these people. And so it's like, you know, if they do a $25,000 donation, okay, is it, do they, do they have a sport specific thing? Do they, um, you know, okay, I just want football. Okay, well, well so $25,000 gets them X, right, for football. Yeah. And that money goes, you know, there's a portion of that money that will go to, but like trying to figure out like what portion, because if there's banner sales and if we're selling different things and we're selling advertising on this and it takes away from something else, we're trying to, we, we've got to make sure we're paying attention to what that money level is because if the banner sales and all that fundraising, you know, um, raises, you know, $15,000, $20,000. We don't want those sports to lose that income. So we're trying to figure out what that looks like. And um, I know Oak Ridge does, you like know, crossover to, sports, you mean like how right, like crossover it? sports. Yeah. yeah. So what, what are you doing? And it's like, yeah. if they're donating, you know, football may get some of the money or they're advertising only on football. So then we figure that out or they're advertising gotcha. only on baseball or they're advertising only in the gym and there's spot, like we're, we need to figure out like what spots, you know, what are the, are there spots on the scoreboard that can be sold? And what does that look like? You know, like Oak Ridge has, has the spots and it's like a thousand dollars a year with three year minimum contract. Like it's little things like that, but we need this committee to figure out some of those pieces so that when we throw it out and we're getting big donations, we do have a handful of people who donate to all of the sports on campus that are interested in making big donations. So it's yeah, kind of trying to figure out rights. 
Yeah, no, well, well, all of those things are on the right. table. So, so all of those things are on the table, but we just need a small I mean, group it, to kind of move it forward. And it seems like a lot, but it's not. No, I mean, it to, to be honest, as it, she talked about, some people are like, oh, 25 grand is a business and I get X, Y, and Z. Correct. Uh, all you need is a handful of those and you're done. Right. We right. just need a committee. We just need to make sure that we're considering things from other sports that we may not be considered. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, so, so what, you know, well, how much do you think is like we did for banners for football? Mm -hmm. um, we would turn around because so many of us are in both sports, right? I'm sure right. there's a lot of his dual sports. Yes. Oh, which banners do you have? We'll reach out to those people and say, do you want to hang them up on lacrosse too? And then we give you a fifty dollars discount because we already have the banner made. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I exactly, what you're saying, right? Okay. So it's trying to kind of come up with the group and also come up with come up with names and so that you know, as for so that it's very systematic in how we're going out. You know, who already do, who already donates to us, and starting with that group and every yeah, and, group. Our, and once we have our quotes, official yeah. quotes, right. updated, ready to go. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, what we will be doing first and foremost, we'll be saying what of that can we get covered with the contacts we already have? Correct. So Correct. I think probably we've got half of this covered already. I we agree. don't need to worry about yeah. it. So now we're just talking about, okay, we need to run fundraise $250,000. Right. How are we going to do that? And I want to do it over five years. Okay. So, because it doesn't have to be all at once. We, we, we have cash. So we can go pay the half a million dollars you know, and take, you know, spread that over you know, the I, next three to five years and know that, you know, we're going to get that back, you know, uh, from that. So correct. we'll, we'll figure like someone, it out as we go. Yeah. On. Yeah. Did football, did, was it only football that had that problem where we contacted some of our donators and they had already donated money through someone that pretended they were Granite uh -huh. Bay? Yeah, it was oh only football. It was and only, football. only a couple so, people, but yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure how we're getting this out. It's really, really hard to fake it yeah. because once word gets out that we're collecting for this stuff. So it's rally up. So, so we're, so this is the conversation. Like, so for example, uh, basketball is doing it right now and they have, they've collected like $20,000 already in like two weeks and it's not even public. All that they're doing is there's, it's not on a website. It's nowhere. They're just sharing it with the people who are interested in donating. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's what we'll intend to do kind of school wide. Because yes. again, then we're not even any particular sport needing to cover a certain amount. We'll just send out at some point when we're ready and we have quotes and we've got the district to buy in too. Because I don't want to go out and have the district say, hell no, we're not letting you do all of that right, right. now. Right. They're open to it as long as we're funding it all. Right. We're open to it. Um, but it's a nightmare to work with them. So getting permits right. from them, getting them to sign off on stuff. They have special right. requirements for the contractors. Right. Um, but once we have that and we've got commitment from them that, hey, if you fund this, we'll do it. We'll do it on the timeline you have. Then we will have a campaign go out to the entire school community as well, saying we are doing this as a school, not football, not track, not athletics. Right. As a school, a we are modernizing our scoreboard systems. We need to raise, you know, $250,000. Here's a website to do that. And it'll just track generic donations and it doesn't have to be anything. And then, then we'll figure out from there. You know, I think between four or five of us clubs, we're going to probably get most of it. I guess that's the key is make sure people understand if it's not from Rally Up, right? That's what's coming from, then don't donate. Yeah. Right. And, so, and so the other thing is, is like, for example, we, for the basketball, we... They, they, they noted him and so the, the capability of rally up is you can say I want to send a check you can put your information in and say I'm going to bring you a check and so like we went and deposited the basketball check last week compute like was it how long was that a few days ago, was, yeah, few days yeah. ago. and because it was one of those donations and it was from uh was it Folsom like Ford like somebody yeah. you know what I mean and it was a you know three thousand dollar check they okay. wanted again you can have that capability that they can put it in Still there, but they don't have to do okay. a crack uh, a okay. thing, but we will collect the checks. And okay. it's, again, I think it's just a way to monitor it. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's going out small and, and individualized and specific, and then it'll go out wide. It's kind of the thought process, right, Stephen? Yeah. For sure. Okay. All right, let's try to, I'm going to pump through some because we have eight more slides to go. So um, <laughs> do it. I want to try to be done by nine. So. Uh, volunteer management, this is just a repeat. Most of you probably know this, but we pay as boosters for signup.com. So don't use signup genius or any others because you have a lot more feedback for this. 
I've been using Google Docs. Okay, this is new. Yeah, okay. So no Google Docs or forms or anything else. So we pay for you to have a premium sign-up program. Uh, if you want to know how it works, Margo uses it heavily, okay. so does track. Uh, <laughs> so let me tell you, I am not technical. Anybody, I am not technical at all. And I was so mad when Stephen made me have to use this for sober grad night. There's 250 slots. I was so mad having to change it from Sign Up Genius. But once you got it in, it's actually almost identical. And it's just, we have the premium, we have everything you can. It, it's actually totally fine. Once yeah. you get it all in, once you get over the Do you path, know my living hell I've been through this year? Where were you? Do you know? <laughs> Where have you been? Oh my God. It is it is ridiculous. No, it's on our website. website. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, I had to do the whole freshman JV. Okay, I will help horrible. you. I just horrible. did one for I Megan for that. BTC. <laughs> I just think you should know how to do it. Yeah, I don't, we I have, have a regular one, account, so. so you can just do the promo code. Code and right yeah. there, and it'll yeah. upgrade. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll get the upgrade. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And, and, I and then it ties you to us so that we can do do more stuff and, and help out and some things in there as well. So, yes, use this. If you don't have one yet, go do it. We have lots of licenses. If you have teachers and they regularly asking for volunteers, let them use it. Tell them about it. I don't have relationship with the teachers, so I don't tell them because I don't talk to them. But if you do, have them use it, right? Um, that we've got 150 and we only have 35 clubs. So, you know, sign up for them. I know we don't have time to talk about, oh, that's how we get to it. We use that yeah. promo Yeah, code. so it, basically you go to the signup.com slash register. Once you've registered, then you use this code to activate all the premium. I gotcha. Features. Okay, perfect. Thank and again, you. that's something we pay for. You don't ever have to worry about it. No cost to you as a booster. Um, and it, the, some of the advantages over Sign Up Genius. So some of you who use Sign Up Genius, this gives you management and check-in for the people. So when they show up, you'll have an app. You can check in that they were here. Um, it has the ability to track hours. That's why you guys come to these meetings. <laughs> yeah, we've had this for uh, oh almost God. two and a half years. years. Yeah, two and a, three years. Year. This is our third yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Track, yeah, we, we've we used this for two years on track, yeah. Sturgeon? I was going to see your brain how you're doing track because mm -hmm. we're both been yes. so unique. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is great, and you can have buttons integrated into the thing. Uh, so like with track, we have a whole volunteer section with this and how to do it, a button to take them right to the sign up and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, we talked about school logos. These are the approved school logos. Um, we have, um, we made finally originals of them all. The school doesn't actually have the originals. Um, so these are what are there. Tim and I have gone back and forth when we talked at the beginning of the school year. It's like no teams can have their own stores that don't, that have just these logos. Um, and sounds like that hasn't gone very well. So he may be open for us to do other things with him. Um, he and I will have some more conversations over the next couple of weeks to figure out because we were going to we had already built and we're rolling out the school wide one ourselves. And then this year he showed up and said, ah, I'm going to do it through this company. And we said, oh, OK, so we might be going back to maybe what we had already planned to be doing. But we'll have to see the logos with no problem. So why is they not supposed to get them? Because like. Ethan graphics, we had to do our senior posters. So what the school has are not original full scale uh, logos. Okay. They are PNG files and they are decent for most things you're going to do a shirt or something. But if you make a banner with these logos, they yeah, have, they won't work. I pay my graphic designer to, to fix them for us. So do we ask you for them? If we yes. Because oh, I'm not giving them to the school because okay. I keep telling them to go get them from the people they paid at like $50,000 to design these things. <laughs> like, okay. I I have vector form out of them all. Yeah. Ask us. Yeah. 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 We so we have vectors of all that. We're trying to stay away from just the G, because the, the school was iffy on that at the beginning of the year when we talked with Tim. He's like, yeah, we still have it, but we're trying to move away from the G because it's clearly, you know. The Packers G and 
So they've changed it enough that they're like, well, now it's not quite the same, but it literally is the same. But because it's on the football field and stuff, it's not going away anytime soon. No, because you wear it and everyone walks around and says, oh, you're a Packers fan? I'm like, no, it's going to be yellow and blue. Yeah, so, like, well, there are a lot of Packers fans around here. <laughs> so for me, if I'm using the G, I like it with the bear, because at least then you're getting the grizzly in there. I try not to use the G by itself, because, again, I don't really like it. Um, and then the um, the curved Granite Bay one or the flat one um, or the other ones, because you can put your team name easily right underneath it, track and field, across, whatever, and have it in there. Um, as you, any of you who were, have been with us for a couple of years, we designed logos for every team. We did all this before they went and spent $50,000 uh, to this company to do it. And we had school approved new logos for everybody. And then they did this and threw all those out. Oh, so we can't use our basketball claw anymore. They haven't said we can't yet, but you know yeah, that's the nation has has their own. That's what we're yeah, because we built all of those with every yeah. sport had their own yeah. with the baseball bat and all that. And we really like them. Um, we can still use them, but we're trying to figure out what what is he going to do. But not on uniforms. No, certainly not on uniforms. Yeah. Uniforms have to use this right. one of these, right? Um, you can't make your own or something, a uh, fundraising, something or other. He told me the same thing. He said spirit wear for lacrosse. Yeah. Had to be all that. He said he wanted all this, like we're aquatic, so you can well, you can add a water yeah. aquatics on there, but and he said he didn't want water drops on it. No, oh, really? Oh, that's. Interesting. Yeah, we're, we're we're trying to figure this out with him because we <laughs> we have so many conflicts. Um, I do totally get the reason we had built new logos for everybody is because we wanted to have brand, you know, congruency, right? We wanted to have similar pieces for every logo. So we built a bear that could put a ball, a bat, a swim, a cap, and it, but it would still all be the same bear. And uh, again, we had school approval for that. So that way every, every team could have a logo that was unique to them, but it was still had the brand of the school. That went away with all this, and so I don't know if we're going to just do that again and design new ones. But that would be my vote. Which is what? I said we just need to yell for it to come back. And thirty-five of us want it back. What if Tim is just well, and he hasn't said tired. he can't use though for our own. So for our spirit stores, I have approval to use the logos we built last year, or to to take these and slightly modify as long as we're controlled. But I think we need to take a, all of us need to take a look. But it can't. I mean, I the original agreement with Tim was it couldn't be any of these by themselves. I had to modify it with a team name or some something of that nature. And we one of the problems we have is every team was doing their own stuff, right? So lacrosse had their stuff. They found some clip art somewhere, and everybody was just finding clip art making stuff, right? We don't want that. So whatever we do use, we want it to be professional. We want it to be congruent with the brand in some fashion. So I'm going to get with Tim over the next month or two. We got to figure this out. Um, but at the end of the day, you would think they want more spirit wear out there to be visible. And when they put these limitations on there, I know. That yeah, I he, he really yeah. didn't. He was it was all about it. It was all about wanting it to do it through himself. And I don't know why. Yeah, that's for sure. Like, I don't want just a bear. Well, and that's what we had done. So we, so we had built, um, and this is where we'll continue to go through. We had built a store of some kind, and again, none of them are cheap. So there isn't a platform out there that does real time shipping, which is a key for us. That has to be one of the keys. None of them are, you know, good pricing. Now there are some that are better than others. I think the pricing on what he's got is pretty ridiculous for what you get. Um, but we had started building logos that were based off the brand, but said mom, dad, you know, grandma, had those kind of things that you could easily swap in some of those things in particular spots. That's what we want to do. We want to get back to that, you know, um, and that's the key. We all have to work together to get that done because we can't have every club doing their own thing with their own looks and feels. And that's what he doesn't want. And unfortunately, everybody was doing that. So then in the end, he just said, nobody can do it. Because it was easier to say nobody can do it than it was to try to rally everybody together and say, here's what we're going to do. We'll get there. <laughs> well, and I, yeah, and I, I just think that's the point to get across. It's 
everyone's yeah. going to continue to do that under the radar if he if we don't provide something for people. and not all of these look that, very good on clothing <laughs> no. i mean some of them are okay for they hats we did the bear by itself like, on a hat and it looks pretty decent but nobody's going to know that's grand bay right this is not even unique to us really so you know it's it's a little frustrating but we're going to move on from that because I've got way more stuff to cover. I'm not going to really even talk about this. We do have a um, wholesale print shop. So it is a pain to manage right now because right now I'm the only one with a login. And so when people ask for stuff, they have to come to me. And more often than not, football comes without having sizes properly for a eight foot banner and they give me something that's four inches big. And then I have to have a graphic designer try to recreate it. And I just don't have time for that. If you guys come up with ready artwork, you want a four by eight banner, you won't find it cheaper than we have here. They're like 20 bucks. So when you go spend $250 at Weight Graphics, great, you're helping local business, but you're wasting a lot of money. I had to do all the design work myself. Yeah. And I paid 35 piece. Yeah, um, we one of the things we are considering and we, we can certainly discuss as a group, there are companies that we could pay uh, like 300 bucks a month and it's unlimited graphic design. So if we had enough graphic work throughout every month that we're like, hey, we're going to want new images for shirts. We're going to we have a banner that needs to get done. That might be worth doing. We've something we contemplated doing. Um, I have a graphic designer that works for me, so I have used him. But unfortunately, I'm just paying for that out of my pocket. Um, and that's not a viable long term solution. Um, so again, if you have ready art, then come to me for banners, you know, give me a week or two. Mm -hmm. They ship from Burbank, full color, front and back, 20 bucks with grommets. They're, they're super cheap. Do they do stickers? Stickers, anything you want. Anything you can think to print, even shirts. They do shirts, you know, uh, they're not the greatest shirts. So there are many other people who do shirts locally that I would say use. His shirts are hard to do. Um, but banners, you know, yard sign things. I know some clubs sell those, right, to their athletes. Or if you're thinking about doing a fundraiser, then put a QR code on there and put it in all your kids' yards. You know, raising funds for, you know, Grand Bay Lacrosse, scan here. And those things are, are fairly cheap too. So, but it's got to be ready art. Uh, insurance. We provide insurance. Please do not buy insurance. We had a club do that this year. They spent a hundred and something dollars on insurance and it was just a waste of money. It doesn't extra coverage you. There's nothing you needed it for. And it was too late to undo it because they had already did it for their events. So be forewarned, please don't waste money. We have coverages for everything. Okay. Uh, including this year, uh, added on, um, you know, if people say somebody touched them inappropriately, we now have coverage to handle all that. So there's literally nothing you could need outside of what we provide, and we don't charge you anything. Okay, including events with alcohol. So if you're throwing an event like football does with alcohol at a party, you don't need extra insurance. You don't need an alcohol rider or anything. It's you just use our insurance. Um, if you need a um additional insured or an event you're hosting somewhere um aquatics regularly rents out the lutheran church um we can do that more often than not when we give them the certificate certificate of insurance they're fine with that they don't actually need the additional insured but we can do that um, but it takes takes four or five days to get it so what if i ran like last year i did the lacrosse fundraiser at my home yeah so fully insured. So if something happened in your home, we would be primary insurance. It's next. because my husband was really stressed about it. Yeah, yeah. No, we're fully yeah, insured. Sure. <laughs> what about travel insurance? Uh, you mean as far as like trip interruption stuff? Yeah. No. Now this is more liability, media, you know, so if we advertise something that doesn't go well or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Um, theft, loss, you know, if we have a club members stealing money from you. We've got coverage for that. We have fidelity bonds and stuff. So, but yeah, trip interruption, uh, we won't have. So if you're going, if you're paying money 
like a silver ground was considering doing at you know Santa Cruz, right? So if you're doing that, you're gonna get probably whatever trip interruption in insurance. New concession stand, super excited um, if it ever finishes. Um, it's way behind schedule. They're still saying that we'll be done by March, which would mean we could potentially use it for track, but I'm not holding my breath. Um, if you're not aware of what it is, it should be pretty awesome. We don't actually know what's gonna be in it because every time we talked to them, they kept changing the architecture plan, but we, we did give them lots of feedback. So we're hoping uh, built-in point of sale systems, lots of space, uh, cookers, you know, um, grills, uh, soda fountains, all that stuff in it. But the bathrooms too are going to be done or no? Bathrooms, take it, all of it's one big massive so building now. Uh, and it'll have on the back, so on the back of the building is going to be the snack bar. So you'll have like a visitor side, a home side, and then the middle. So we'll be able to do ticket or our uh, food ordering lines. We'll be able to do mobile order pickup lines. We'll be able to do all of that with the space that we have. Um, so for those who use it, use the snack bar today, we have all those features already, right? So we have mobile order capable to the snack bar. We have point of sale systems. Um, I'm not sure if lacrosse has used them, but I know football does. I know. Aquatics use some of it. I don't know how much of the point of sale they're using right now. Mm -hmm. uh, football does, track does, uh, somebody else uses it. Junior Grizzlies. Junior Grizzlies yeah. um, so as we have more info, we'll certainly put it out there. We are going to be updating, doing the same stuff we did for the normal, um, for our snack bar we have, we're gonna be doing in the gym, snack bar. So we want to make the gym snack bar have point of sale. If we need to put in some other equipment in there, like we did in the uh, big snack bar, we'll do it. I still have yet to see it in the five years we've been here. <laughs> so at some point, I'll go over there. Yeah, at some point, I'll go over there. I have access to it. I'll go over there and actually take a look at it. I know it's a little uh, postage stamp size, but nine years. Uh, nine years at the school, yes. Uh, any questions on the concession stand? All right, electronic payments. Uh, credit card. So we have again all of that done. So everybody, every team, every club has their own Square account. If you don't know how to access it, your treasurer should have. If the treasurer didn't pass that knowledge to you, well, shame on them, and we'll get you access and teach you how to use it. But this is what you want to do for any kind of in-person sales. So we have, as we talked about, if you run a snack bar. We've got full point of sale systems, cash drawers, receipt printers, everything you would need to set up all your items, sell them online, take mobile orders, all of that stuff's already built in. Because we're nonprofit, we get a very inexpensive rate with it. So it doesn't cost us a lot to take credit cards, so you should be using it for everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the only thing we don't use this for is your uh, team donations for your registration, right? All that goes through sports and uh, but this can be used for anything else. Um, it's not as cheap as our fundraising platform. So if you're using it for fundraising, it's still better to do that. But if you have somebody who's like, I got a credit card right now, take my money and do a donation and do it. You're going to lose, you know, 0. 0.3. <laughs> this is square. Or rally up. Yeah. And rally up uses our strike account, which the ticket system does as well. So Stripe is where we get the like 2.2%. Uh, so most teams have their own contact list reader. If you don't, you can buy them for about 35 bucks on Amazon. Every team should have one. Um, it's literally just a little puck. It's Bluetooth to your phone. And then it does Apple Pay, uh, the chip cards, no swiping needed, you know, and it's super simple to have. We do have a couple terminals that you can check out with us. They're kept in the snack bar. Uh, they do require Wi-Fi, so not extremely helpful here on campus. Um, so, you know, we typically use those um, in the snack bar where we have Wi-Fi. They work off house bus. Yeah. Yeah, so if you know how to do that and do it to your phone, it'll work just fine. And technically, we've been working with the school's IT. I think that equipment might be able to hop on the Wi-Fi now, but we haven't been able to test it. 
and it's only taken them two years. So I'm not sure that's actually going to work. The uh, square pucks on Amazon are forty five dollars. Yeah, inflation. Inflation. <laughs> um, I still recommend getting one. There's no reason every team shouldn't invest forty five dollars to get one, or every club, every choir, every drama, media. Everybody should have one. So that if you need to take a credit card, you want to sell a Something you've got the ability to do it without needing to go to anybody. Uh, Tim has four of them and he uses it for athletic sales. So all of the kids who are paying in person for athletic passes and stuff all come through this. Um, we can help you set it up. We've got people to help you create items or go through the training on how to use Square if you need. All right, donations versus fees. Um, and as I repeat this at every meeting, so if this is new for you, um, good. And if it's if you've been here a lot, you know I repeat this every meeting. So <laughs> donations versus fees, what you need to know. Uh, schools and boosters cannot charge fees for sports and clubs. Okay, so we're not charging for uniforms. We're not charging for <laughs> the season fees or things like that. This is a donation. If they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. They still get the same uniform. Okay. Um, we can ask for voluntary contributions. So, this is why we do all registration through Sports Engine. We control it, means I'm controlling the language that's being used to ask for the donations. Okay. And I know we've had some contention with some clubs like, well, it's really, I need them to do this. It's not really optional. It is optional. Okay. And we word it appropriately. By law, it is optional. Yeah. Um, so any kind of donations, anything club related like that, uh, we review it all, right? So we have our team that's helping to build those registration forms. So we use the right language. That's why there's going to be buttons that say no donation at this time. And does it suck? Yes. Have we had a big uptick of people selecting that during COVID? Yes. Um, I think track had 50% opt out and not last year, thank goodness, but the year before. Yeah. 50% of people said, I'm not giving you any money. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay. Um, and, and there were a couple others that got hit even worse because they only have 15 people on the team and, you know, half of them, at least with track, half still leaves me 50 people. <laughs> so, you know, but some teams hurt and we did our best to help accommodate Tim trying to get extra money and things like that. But we can't force them to do it. There are lots of options on the registration to split up payments. Yeah. And to yeah. donate in a free form instead of the amount so they can choose the amount that they are comfortable with donating versus what you are suggesting the donation be. Yeah. So there's ways. And even with that, you can still break up the payments. Yeah. And two things I'll mention on that front because it is something I don't have in here, but does come up regularly. So as for when you're talking about your registrations and your donations and what you're asking for one we always suggest that your donation your primary team contribution donation covers everything okay any other things in there that you have volunteer buyouts or other stuff should be supplementary to that you don't want to assume well i'm only going to do 200 here and i'm going to need people to do 100 here and i'm hoping some people are going to volunteer we'll do fundraising like you should get enough money from your main thing to do it we have some teams that charge 800 dollars. there's some teams that charge 50 dollars because they don't need a lot of money okay um but you should know that going in okay um and it, and it should easily do that two Volunteer buyouts, everybody has this. We've had a couple of people like, oh, I really need volunteers. Totally understand. Totally understand you need them. Those people who are paying are going to do it no matter what, and they're going to volunteer. So if you need those volunteers and make it 400 bucks, you'll have less people pay for it. But the five people who do, they weren't going to help you in the first place. If they're willing to fork out $400 just to not volunteer with you, they weren't going to help. So take the money instead. And then work with us. We'll help find volunteers. We'll pay to have volunteers. That's what I tried to do because um, my goal was to hire other clubs to work the snack bar. Yeah. Um, I couldn't get. We can help do that. So there are clubs that do it all the time. Some of them have had long time relationships where baseball does footballs, you know, right. uh, parking lot and stuff, and they've just prearranged that. 
I thought it was a parking lot, but when I asked, a lot of the students don't want to miss the varsity game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was really coming into a struggle with because it's mainly the varsity games that I can't seem to get all the coverage. Yeah. Freshman JV, no big deal. Um, it's the varsity snack bar games that are really hard to cover. Yeah. You got yeah. paged thankfully. I was gonna say the clubs that don't I had this conversation with somebody asking about. Dan, uh, volunteers to set up the dance during the football game and everybody was like yeah no but there are people that don't go to the football game yeah. so we need to figure yeah. out who are the people that don't go to the football game and that's go to the clubs and, and, and we and we have avenues so again if you yeah. <laughs> perhaps the choir because i know my choir kids didn't yeah. have the football games yeah. so yeah. The, the key so is, to figure out yeah. the key is communication uh -huh. So if you let us know, not the night before, not a week before, but if you'd let us know at the beginning of your season, hey, I'm struggling to get these volunteers for this, or if you know in advance, hey, we always struggle with this, we've got avenues to help you then go and find other people or get volunteers you or send it out to the entire campus. Exactly. That was the thing, like, we need to donate to a club or, yeah. Yeah, so I, I can... I think the club would be more ideal because now it's going back to the program, right? right? right. You can yeah. send it to the club, you can send it out to. But we have, so we have, I've got the ability to send messages out to the entire campus. Yeah, but I have so, eight carrots by out, okay? Yeah. So it's not a big deal. Like the season's almost up. We're down to one last game. But yeah. I, it would be ideal to have a certain program or more. Yeah, varsity yeah. girls basketball. Like, sometimes they don't have a lot of fundraisers yeah. that really need a lot of support. So it's like I'm sure choir would be thrilled, yeah. or like, media, or some of these that you know that, yeah. that don't have sports necessarily uh, would love to because they you know there are we have clubs that don't aren't able to do a lot of fundraising, so they don't have a lot of funds. And if there's ways to do that, person, they'll do sorry. it. Okay. And then the other thing that we have to do is not get rid of the the buyout. But then raise it. If you had 28 people do it, let's say you're charging $200. I need to have that conversation because then we double it. I'm okay with it. the buyouts because we actually did well yeah. this year. I'm, I'm not complaining about my job. It was more, I, I wish I could put it We have between all three teams this year. Yeah, I mean, have, when you have hundreds yeah, in 28, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know volleyball, they did $1,000 buyouts. Oh. Well, so this and they got three people. I'm saying, yeah. wow. So that, so that they right there out. for yeah. a club who was it's doing two hundred dollars buyouts, that's that's. They said yeah. we have to have volunteers. We don't want people to buy out. So if you right. don't want people to buy out, you make, make it, it double, out. and then boom, you get thing. instant and, and, and so yeah. that is our stance on it. We aren't allowing because we had volleyball ask us. We want to get rid of this. We need the volunteers. We've had other clubs. We have to have it. We it is mandatory to put it in. So if you want to set it super high and hope that nobody buys it, all for it. Yeah. But as you just saw, three people did it, even though it was a thousand dollars, and those people would not have shown up to help. Correct. Right? Is it really? I think it's a mandatory <laughs> that we have it because in aquatics we struggle. So it means take so many volunteers every time. Right? Yeah. And we are That's we are right. always in trouble. Yeah. That's why you bump it up because you really don't want them. And if they buy out, then you if they buy out enough, then you can pay somebody. Yeah. 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 It is mandatory, but again, I'm not saying, oh, it's got to be 200 bucks. So if, if you're at 200, 300, 400 dollars and you need those people and you're not getting, make it 800, make it a thousand dollars. You'll have far fewer people doing it. Um, but the problem is, one of the things that you'll notice and the trends that we're noticing is, you know, those people aren't going to do it anyway. So we're going to work on ways to kind of, so like track this year, we are changing our language on that volunteer bio. Right now we have a button that says, I will volunteer and help fundraise, right? Mm -hmm. It's just generic. We're going to make it very specific with check boxes for each saying, I, get, I will volunteer at two games or two sessions and I will take two shifts at the Sturgeon. And those are each going to be things that they're agreeing to because it's much more likely that I can go back to them and say, you agreed, you signed this, this is the contract, you said you're gonna show up and I don't see your name in my list. It's much easier to, to go back and say, you committed to four different things that you were gonna do, instead of just being as generic as we were, because we need, well, our track meet alone needs 200 people, right? And having 200 people in one day when they wanna watch the game too, right? They wanna watch their kids do their stuff, it ain't easy. Okay. I think it's what we're doing for registration. That's why we wanted to start it and then roll one into the other. 
That would be great. Thank you. And one of the things that we do on tournaments, so some teams, if you are struggling to get people for a tournament to help and you need 40 people to volunteer, what we have seen is if you offer $100 off to one of the other teams or whatever that dollar figure needs to be, then you get them to cover a couple of things. So we've done that with track. So we said, hey, you're going to cover our jump pits and we're going to give you $100 off the registration and they provide the people to run the jump pits for the whole meet. Thank you. Here. <laughs> well, yeah, so the, the, it's meant for if you donate, here's when and how and what you can get for a refund. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because that, that's one of the keys we're struggling with is people donating and saying, I didn't, you know, I don't want to. And, and then doing chargebacks. It's one like refunds are no problem. I've never had anybody, any coach say, yeah, I'm not giving you your money back. You're, you're done. But where you now have people just charging it back. I've like never seen this adults who were like right here. I'm like right here. You didn't ask me, didn't say, can you refund my money? You just did a charge back. <laughs> like, that's a nightmare for us. So um, so we're putting stuff in place to hopefully eliminate that. Uh, uh, not to interject, but um, I had a question. I thought I heard Margo say that something about the registration site. Maybe it wasn't Margo. One of the issues that boys volleyball had, which, by the way, initially we thought uh, a couple of people suggested, oh, we'll put the buyout at like two hundred dollars. I'm like, heck no, put it at five hundred. And we did get two people to do it um, with only 30 families, actually less than that, because there's some shared families. But anyway, um, my question was in the registration process, we were not able to, at least the way we had it set up last spring say that you can do a volunteer buyout um, only if you pay the full donation amount. Um, same thing with some extra things like backpacks. And uh, you know, we had some families who said, I can't afford to donate, but I can afford to buy the optional backpack. Is there going to be a way to, um, on the registration site, not disallow someone from being able to buy extras? With, if they don't uh, pay the thing. Yeah, we did have this conversation. So, I mean, te it, it, yes, technically it can be done. Um, and and we had that, I think football, we did that, you know, a couple of years ago. And then we opted not to do it again, mainly because getting something tends to be better than not getting anything. Um, so I think we kind of have to weigh that out. Um, you know, because here's here's a problem we have. The few people we're talking about, I, I mean, it's it's rare. And these, you know, we, we don't know what their circumstances are. We can't ask. It's on the board. I'm going to talk about it. We can't ask them. We can't say, oh, do you need a scholarship? Or, you know, like we can't just ask. Um, sometimes prying every penny out of those people that you can is worth doing because otherwise you're just never going to see anything from them. So I, I, it is something we can technically do. I'm, I'm willing to entertain it and talk about it and see if there's some benefit to it. But, you know, the reality is, you know, a couple hundred dollars is better than getting no money at all. And if we if they don't donate to the season, maybe they don't believe in it, you know, and then you, you turn off everything else they could give you, then you get nothing. Right. You don't even get yeah. that $200 for the volunteer buyout. That's true. Uh, it's so like the um, we we give them, you know, uh, things that cost like the backpack is a cost. So we're not making any money on it. So they'll buy those as an optional thing, but then they won't donate. But I think maybe, yeah, you're right. It's, it's it's sensitive. And maybe what we can do is just work on the verbiage on the site, which is, you know, if you decline the registration, then it may not hide the option to add a backpack, for example, or a volunteer buyout. But we can say, you know, please only select if you have opted to donate any amount to the team. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, we can't do that. I'd rather just hide it and not let them know about it. But it, again, some of those things are just things like, for one, don't sell it at cost and, you know, have a little money in there. So you're making some money off of it. I, I understand the concept of selling it at cost, but we don't necessarily need to. Most parents are willing to. You know, once a year, spend the extra hundred bucks to get the bag or the, you know, uh, jacket for water polo or whatever it is that they need. But, um, 
it, it's it's interesting. I thank goodness for us. It's a very small part of what we deal with. We have very generous parents. Uh, I know most teams have at least one or two parents on the team that go and add an extra thousand dollars to the donation field, right? Um, and they, that covers the four or five people right there that maybe didn't opt in for that. So, you know, thank goodness we're not going, hey, I'm not making my budget this year and I don't know what to do about it. Um, you know, during COVID we did, but in our normal years, we don't have that problem. Um, so it's something we can keep talking about and it's certainly something we'll, we can entertain, but I, it, my opinion is you know, get whatever money you can, you know, um, and maybe one of the things we can do is if you don't donate, then it costs more money. If we can hide it until they pick donation or no donation, and then when they pick no donation, the backpack's a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah um, there, there are ways we can probably get around around some of that. If the word gets out that I paid forty bucks for, can you believe I paid a hundred dollars? Well, yeah, but you get a discount if you were donated to the team. You're going to get a discount for that. Well, then that's different. The other problem with that, if you donate, you're going to get a discount. You know, so I think there are legal ways we can get around it. Yeah, let me the glass digress this and we'll, Yeah. I don't want to digress too much, but a lot of people paid in like literally cash. They just pulled out like wads of hundreds and it got it, it got really confusing as to what was actually donated or not. So versus a backpack versus volunteer buyout. But um hopefully we can streamline that a little bit better this year. Anyway, thank you for your suggestions, I appreciate. Yeah. It. So on that, and and I did see that um, uh, uh, your volleyball, right? That's correct. Boys volleyball. Yeah. So um, I think I saw a bunch of donations uh, deposited. That isn't supposed to happen at all. So um, we'll work on it for next year. But you, if people want to use. Uh, cash then we just tell them to put the money in the bank and do an ACH because then we'll let them do check or credit card um so that will solve that problem when you just tell them hey you have to do through this QR code and it'll handle all that stuff because the problem is we now have to figure out how to get all of those athletes into sports engine as well um and I didn't see them get in there so we have to figure but that out we were okay I was okay manually adding some of them um it was, that wasn't really the problem, but I don't like the handling of the cash. So I like that we're doing everything digital. So we'll, we'll just emphasize that more this year that we're we're going we're not doing as much cash transactions, check transactions, and um, just sort of like the the new the new normal. Yeah, exactly. And 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 we're thankful for those who were thinking like, oh, I'm trying to save you some money. But the reality is it adds more overhead and headache than it's really worth to save those three dollars that they were going to spend um, you know that the clubs are going to spend on that so um so back to the donations versus fees uh we can not have donations used for only a particular student right so if anybody's ever like hey i want to do this but i want to do something special for them we can't do that uh, we cannot force purchases of equipment spirit packs uh, we, we every year we have this question. Some some you know team somebody somewhere wants their head bows or <laughs> their shirts or whatever. Like oh this is mandatory. I don't care what the coach wants and whether it's mandatory or not mandatory. You have to give it to them. They don't want to donate to you for that spirit pack. Then give it to them because it's considered uniform. Okay. Um, and if it's not, then you need to be okay with some people on the squad not having it and other people having it. If it's just literally stuff you're going to wear uh, as warm up gear or something. Okay. Um, so that's a big thing. It, there is nothing mandatory. You can't force people to buy anything. We can force them to fundraise. We can force them to fundraise. Yeah. Um, and we can't force fees with a, uh, with a waiver process. So we've had people ask this too, like, oh, well, can't they just ask him, like, do you need assistance or things? Like, we can't ask. If they want to volunteer and say, hey, I can't pay it all, then we can work on the back end and do stuff with them, but you can't ask them. You can't ask them, you know, do you want to donate any? Is this financial hardship? You want me to split this up for you? We've given them all of those options online. So if at the end of it, they still don't want to do anything, you know, it is what it is, okay? Uh, but you can force them to fundraise. So if they don't donate, 
you know, you can certainly say you you must fundraise, you must participate in this. They can't opt out of doing that. Okay. Any questions on this? Good. Um, if you guys need one on ones, um, we meet with clubs. Uh, sometimes it's Margo meeting with a club. Sometimes I do. We've come to your booster meetings if we know when they are and you'd like us to come and talk about things. Maybe some of what you heard here, you're not quite sure how to tell the rest of your crew. And you want us to come in and share that. Uh, we're help, you know, happy to do it. Sometimes you want to know how to best fundraise, right? We have people that this is, you know, stuff they've done for a living, went to school for and understand how to do it. Right? Um, tap into us. For that that's what we're here for uh we're not just here to tell you you know what you have to do and not do we're here to hopefully help you uh modernize simplify and improve so let us know if you have stuff so now we're in questions so if you don't have any questions well, feel free to leave. if you have them let's go over them. i was just gonna say yeah no, i know there's only 11 of us i think so the importance i think i think everybody here has seen the importance of being here oh, yeah i learned a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff i mean this is a big meeting it's normally not this big because this was like a you know starting off the year this is normally the meeting we do in august yeah but there's a lot of things going on throughout the school that we don't have a way to communicate with all the organizations if you're not involved in that specific thing so yeah. it's important to try to have somebody from your club come every month. Yeah. It, it, because it, it's it, it, there's a lot or of information online, right? and there's a lot of things yeah. going on. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. It, yeah it, we make it easy. There's really not an excuse. Uh, obviously, this was kind of last minute, if you will, because we literally got the civic permit yesterday. So How we've been we waiting for them? approval. Do we email you guys and let you know? It's, no, the website will have the link and it's Perfect. just it's Microsoft Perfect. Teams. It's easy to do from your phone um, or your computer. You don't have to have an account or anything. I'll just let you join. Um, Amazon online, but who else was? Is anybody? I didn't look at the list. So. so is there, it's like a liaison, right? It's what you kind of are to back to yeah. the club. Okay. Yeah. 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 You so want. The club is basically what the booster is in. Reverse your club. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're not here, then you don't necessarily you don't learn all the new stuff that we do because we don't do a lot of emailing they clubs change so often trying to maintain the email list was just didn't work so we do send out some stuff major things to sports engine list but even at that not everybody in your clubs in sports engine so we don't have a master list of everybody we have every president and treasurer and we do email those um so by being here you learn about all this stuff you get to have voice and opinion you get to work with us and have one on one Q and A. So when you're struggling with something and you, you know, you have things maybe not working well with something, this is a great time to do it. Um, yes, we only meet once a month, you know, but um, yeah, this is probably the most we've had in the last few. <laughs> and we've had up to fifty people at at them, but um, I thought it was like a you guys met and then you told us. Well, so, normally the so, so normally it's either the president or the treasurer that oh, comes. Okay. You guys have said, you know, you Chris normally comes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, Chris is normally here, and, and okay. so or um, before him, Stabber. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Stabber probably did like Stabber was here. Yeah, so Stabber was here. So and again, that we did that uh, for which I'm with football. lacrosse and football. No, so I am the um, fundraiser coordinator for football, yeah. and then for lacrosse, I am the secretary. Again, but I just think it, you know, getting across that, you know, somebody should from your organization should attend. I asked him if he wanted me to come. And nobody know. knows these are boxes of mail for the different clubs. So there might be bills in here, there might be and that's in the office. <laughs> these are in the office so in the mail room. So you I bring them here um, every booster meeting so that you can check them here. Yeah. Um, Suzanne, uh, I'm going to end the online unless you have a question. Hi, Suzanne. Bye. No, I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but thank you so much. This is very convenient. I appreciate it.